Welcome everybody to Youth Impact where we are not just talking about growing up, we are growing up talking. This show has been brought to you by Success Africa, a Pan-African media organization that focuses on success stories of Africans. And of course, not to forget our lovely host, Convent International Hotel, your ideal conferencing partners for literally all your conferencing needs. I am your lovely host, Derek Wesley. Stay tuned. Confidence in one's own worth and abilities is what we call self-esteem. Success Africa went out to the streets, and this is what our youth had to say about self-esteem. I'm Belden, and I'm a student at UN. Okay, so have you ever felt a sense of low self-esteem? Uh, yeah, there's a time I felt low self-esteem. Uh, like, si kwa najua minia. Unajua? But, nika kujua kujua, unless you believe in yourself, no one else will believe in you. Uh, so how did you manage through it? Am I just believing in yourself was enough? Uh, you just start by believing in yourself, pole pole, tu pole pole. Uh -huh. The small things that matter. Come uh -huh. to stand up for yourself, uh -huh. to draw boundaries. Uh, evil to pole pole, tu. And what do you think cost it? Uh, maybe to have friends that cancel you. I wale marafiki wana ku drag down to. You can tell us your name and what you do. Uh, my name is Jack Mangi and I'm a volunteer teacher at Pace International. Mm -hmm. So you can tell us, today we're talking about self-esteem. You can tell us if you've ever suffered low self-esteem and how did you build it back or how can someone rebuild their self-esteem? Uh, yes, uh, growing up I had issues with self-esteem. Uh, I did not believe in what I could do. Uh, so when I grew up, uh, I started uh, watching videos uh, on how to build my confidence. So I first started by building my confidence. I started speaking more out through crowds. And by building my confidence, I was able to trust in what I could do. I was able to find myself, who I was as a person, and that really built on my self-esteem. Uh, I'm Kaylan. I do Bachelor of Arts in Psychology. So today we are asking, have you ever felt a sense of low self-esteem? And how did you manage it? And also, what do you think is the cause of it? Mm, yeah, I've ever had such a... We shape it here. And... I feel like... No, no, you want to do something. I wanted to to do IT at Nikki Join, and then Nikanza kuambi ati like ati wo wo wezani ati oku usome ukiwa najua like ukiwa high school ati usome computer ndo ufanye. So I felt like ah this is not me. No, no. So kitu ili me is a similar inside here. I talked out with my some of my friends. And then, nikambiwa, the only way you nafanya psychology and the only way ni, you can do as part-time, na cheki. So, do nikanza kuifanya, fanya at least saizi nimefika maali. Yeah. So, reaching out to people helped you get over it, get over the low self-esteem. Yeah, it's inside here, it's inside here. The more you talk out, the more like, the way it's in a reviewer. Joining us on set today is an accomplished speaker, one of the very few people globally awarded the Distinguished Toastmasters Award, Mr. Paul Dalizu. Karibu. Asante, sir. I feel like we should have some drum rolls for important people joining us on set. Thank you. So Thank tell you. us, who is, who is Paul Dalizu for your audience, our audience who have not gotten to interact with you on a personal level, like I have, of course. Well, I think I'll use three L's. Mm -hmm. One is a life coach, mm -hmm. two is a leadership consultant, mm -hmm. and three, I'm a lecturer. You're a lecturer. Yes. Wow. Those are the three L's. Yes. And I'd use one L for myself. I'm a learner. Ah, excellent. <laughs> Karibu sana on set. Thank you. So the main issue today we are discussing is self-esteem. And maybe just to kick us off, I'd ask you, have you experienced issues with your self-esteem as a person? Well, I believe no one... Everyone has had an experience of self-esteem, mm -hmm. either positively or negatively. So I remember growing up, I had a very small physique and 
being well built was something that you felt like you can be able to, you couldn't be able to articulate yourself very well and perhaps you could fight and if you couldn't fight you had a short end of the stick in a battle so i felt like i need to go to the gym i need to do something so that i have an advantage so that i can be able to be respected i'll say there mm -hmm. so i've had an opportunity of trying to navigate self esteem issues uh, other times i felt probably i've not been brought up in a privileged family for instance mm -hmm. and what can i do so that i be feel like i'm privileged actually i remember there was a time growing up there was one famous program and when we go to school we didn't have a tv first of all i could visit one of my classmates mm -hmm. she could tell me how the weekend was in terms of the program so I could capture all the programs she had so and then I could give you a debrief a debrief, a debrief and, and then i could go share the debrief uh -huh. with the rest of the, with the other people so that i like feel you like you watched them for yourself yes uh -huh. so it's something that i really struggled with. Mm -hmm. but later i discovered i don't have to watch to prove to people that i watched mm -hmm. and but it's just a sense of belonging that i wanted to belong you wanted to belong in to that a... community mm -hmm. oh, that's good i think uh, i've also gone through that uh back in primary i i was blessed they say vertically or horizontally i am short i'm tall i don't know so i i really struggled with that but you also get to realize from what our, our youths are saying from the vox pops is that most people do not really understand what self esteem and self worth is so from a professional point of view what is your own definition of self esteem and and self worth i think self esteem is how you view yourself it's how you tend to place yourself in a particular context mm -hmm. of people self worth is how valuable do you consider yourself could be in a conversation mm -hmm. could be in a group wherever you are um mm -hmm. uh, i had i remember there was a time i had a conversation and it really made me think how do i understand my self worth mm -hmm. but the reality is even if you are rich you are richest person in the room mm -hmm. there's somebody who's richer than you and some wife. point also yes there's others could there's be a plus somewhere there's a plus mm -hmm. somewhere and if you think you are the most worst person mm -hmm. there's somebody who's even doing more worse than you so be confident of who you are mm -hmm. because everyone else is taken and that's what i can say self for this mm -hmm. if you've an opportunity maybe down down the line uh during a conversation i can drop in mm -hmm. Uh, you should example you oh, okay should. so our second question how yes. does self esteem low self esteem actually manifest in people's lives because i understand it comes differently for everybody depending on your environment and your biological makeup as well it can be manifested in several ways mm -hmm. uh, the first way could be probably maybe like shame if you are ashamed uh the other aspect could be maybe feel guilty like this is what i've been able to do that i, I don't feel i'm good enough or able to do so and sometimes could be uh probably with drone so there's so many things that manifest yourself in having a low self esteem mm -hmm. yes you don't tend to speak confidently of who you are you tend to shy away because you feel what am able to speak you second guess yourself but if you're confident of self esteem you're like you know what i may not know something and that's okay so you don't have to know everything mm -hmm. and if you don't know if you understand you don't have to know everything you're confident even being wrong does not make you to be less of who you are it's actually good to be wrong sometimes yes good to be wrong part of the learning process part of the learning process mm, that's good so yes. there there are a lot of misconceptions actually when it comes to handling self esteem and uh, determining whether somebody has a low self esteem maybe you can also tell us what are some of the misconceptions that people have around self esteem and people who have issues with their self esteem well i look at self esteem from three perspectives one is being overconfident mm -hmm. when you're overconfident you think as a christian the word of god or scripture tells us don't consider yourself more highly than you ought to mm -hmm. so some people think they are very high they look down on people which is not healthy secondly is whereby you feel you are less of who you are so is a low self esteem you know and the other esteem which is really good is healthy self esteem understand I may not be the best, mm -hmm. I may not be the worst, mm -hmm. but I can still deliver who I am at that particular point in time. So having those misconceptions or rather having this understanding helps you demystify the misconceptions. Mm -hmm. You know, so you don't become overconfident and think 
that's really really good because when you're overconfident again you miss opportunities of which you could have gained uh perhaps even for learning you know i've met people who do you know this yes i know this but if you say i don't know uh there's a quote we say in chinese i would rather be a fool for a minute mm-hmm. but remain a genius the rest of my life i was waiting for you to say it in chinese <laughs> so that we'll, we have to call and well, so there's one important thing that you've mentioned about being yes. overconfident yes. and being i don't know we should put it as being humble and i think my second question my fourth question would be how do you build self esteem because we are in between the line we are being given a definition which is confidence in one's own worth or abilities okay. but at the same time we are not supposed to be overconfident so what exactly are we supposed to do to build this self esteem and self worth well what i think in terms of building self esteem is three things one is your image mm-hmm. like if i were in a certain way mm-hmm. or probably maybe is not what is expected by the producer i not be confident to articulate myself when i'm here So I feel I'm not at my best to deliver a conversation for young people in Africa to hear for mm-hmm. instance. And as a role model how do I address that people look up to me? You know, so I need to have a positive self image. Mm-hmm. Secondly, I need to believe in myself. You know, they usually say everyone else can believe in you but don't even believe in you. Mm-hmm. If you don't believe in yourself, you may never be successful. Everyone else may not believe in you but if you believe in yourself you can succeed but there may not be a determining factor mm-hmm. so i think believing in yourself that the content you're sharing that the information you're sharing now 1.2 billion people in the world or in africa are being changed by this content you must have a belief that you do so you must have believed that the words you speak they are impacting people mm-hmm. you know it is not just hot air as they call it it's something that is transforming lives the content that you do mm-hmm. so you have to come to that understanding to do mm-hmm. lastly is understanding your self identity and identity is understanding who am i you've been able to have an audit of who you are mm-hmm. and audit is basically trying to understand an assessment of what are my strengths what are my weaknesses, my weaknesses. and how do i use my strengths to the benefit of others and how do i use my weaknesses how can i manage my weaknesses so that they don't become a nuisance yeah downfall to other people mm-hmm. yes so i'm able to work on those particular aspects mm-hmm. so with that you'll be able to be con- if i know my weaknesses this kind of a thing is milk or avoid milk as i am person even know my weakness probably one of the challenging things that affects young people especially with marriage is that aspect of understanding how do i for instance maybe sexuality mm-hmm. sex we know I have a challenge of maintaining chastity or moving in a way that how do i work on that mm-hmm. as an individual what are the boundaries i need to build on that now i'm confident who i am and is not based on what other people say who i am and that's something that has gone even at a global scale mm-hmm. yes well wow that was beautiful and believe you me we have gotten so much and that is just but the first segment and so we are taking a short break and when you come back we show you exactly how you can be confident and not overconfident so that you maintain your self esteem Welcome back to Youth Impact. We are still at Convent International Hotel, your ideal conferencing partners. Feel free to check out on their website at www.cih.co.ke. Thank you so much for sitting tight. You know it's a bit comfortable cuz Convent is a very good place. Definitely. Yeah, so before we we took a break you were taking us through how to build on self worth and you're giving us the difference between being confident and overly confident so you can take us through that one second okay great what i really think in society or probably in life we mm-hmm. need probably like three or four c's mm-hmm. so the first c is be able to understand am i competent or able to do because if you're competent on something which is a skill that you get to build mm-hmm. it gives you commitment on something mm-hmm. you know and when you're committed to something you begin developing strong convictions on it i don't develop strong convictions you become more confident to be able to do mm-hmm. 
So those seeds can interchange depending with where you are. Mm -hmm. Could be like probably I have an interest in something. So I develop a commitment or something. And when I'm committed, probably my Christian faith or whatever, mm -hmm. I develop a particular competence because probably I'm committed to football. Mm -hmm. I develop a particular competence, maybe it's dribbling. Then from there, when I get into the pitch, I'm confident. Mm -hmm. you know. And when I'm confident, I believe even if I get the ball in an awkward situation, I'll be able to put the to ball pull. behind the net. Mm -hmm. ah, that's yes. good. I think I'm confident enough <laughs> in, in, in food. Oh, in food. Yes. So you're, like, you're a chef or... No, I just you're a cook. I enjoy the end product oh, okay. of what chefs do. Okay. <laughs> so uh, to our next question, what is the difference between um, a healthy self-esteem and uh, narcissism? Well, a healthy self-esteem is the ability to understand, like explained, you're not overly confident mm -hmm. and also don't have low self-esteem. So you just at a place of understand my strength and my weaknesses mm -hmm. and how do I work with them to be able to contribute significantly to a particular conversation or a community or wherever you are you know, mm -hmm. in, whatever, in whatever context. When I come to narcissism, I think it's a personality disorder. And it's basically being self-absorbed with who you are. And sometimes it could be a behavior or a trait that has been there for a long time mm -hmm. that develops into, embedded into a particular personality and then becomes narcissism. So it becomes a challenge for you to be able to accept other people's opinion. Because if you have a self-confident, you accept constructive uh, criticism. criticism. Mm -hmm. you know, because criticism, actually, you look at it from this point of view. It's like rain. You know, it can destroy, but it can also build up the plants to be better able to do. Mm -hmm. So when you take criticism in, in particular portions, it can help you become a better person because of feedback of who you are. And in life, you say the greatest room in life is a room of improvement. Mm -hmm. So you have to understand how do you improve what the Japanese call uh, Kaizen, Kaizen, constant improvement. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's what I can be able to say. All right. So you talk about uh, narcissism and uh, people who are narcissists, and you basically say the people who are self-absorbed, it has to be about them and it has to be them, basically. So what is the role of relationships in uh, in actually helping people to generate a good self-esteem? I think the relationship makes you understand that you are not perfect. Mm -hmm. All of us have flaws in life. And how do we live interdependently with each other? And you cannot be the only one who is right. Mm -hmm. The other person is wrong, or the other person is wrong, and you're right. Mm -hmm. So there's always a give and take in every relationship mm -hmm. context. So I think that's one of the things I like to do, because I always believe in the philosophy Every relationship has to have a win-win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all of you are bringing something to the table. Yes. And if that's not there, then that's not an ideal relationship. Mm -hmm. You should run away from that relationship. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's good. So building a good relationship is the is the first way of actually generating a good self-esteem. Yes. Oh, wow. So because our audience mainly are the youths, and these are people who interact with technology, basically social media, what is the role of social media in influencing the development of self-esteem and self-worth? Well, I think social media is a tool mm -hmm. that is a catalyst. It should not be probably like one of the main things that makes people to de de mm -hmm. develop self-esteem. Self-esteem is something that's developed. It's, it's part of a character. It's part of understanding what's my identity. Mm -hmm. And when I understand my identity, I may, not, I may have one follower but that does not be, make me less with somebody who's a million followers. That one follower could be the president of a country or the most influential person in the world. Mm -hmm. And if you influence that person, you can influence so many so people. Many people. You know? mm -hmm. And you can have a million people who don't have as much influence. As so you may do. Not be able to be able to do. So social media is more mm -hmm. of a tool than something that we use to develop your character. Mm -hmm. So I think self-esteem should be something that is from you and not what is influenced by the media, mm -hmm. or probably social media, or each, whichever media you could be engaged in. Mm -hmm. So at any given point in life when uh, I'm questioning my self-esteem and my self-worth, what are some of the healthy coping mechanisms that I can take as an individual and any other person who's getting to listen to this conversation so okay. that we fight it? Th that's an amazing thing to understand. And I think one of the best ways to look at self-esteem and what are the mechanisms as a Christian, surely it's a problem. Understand God has a plan for you. Everyone is unique. 
is like this thumb. There's no one like you. Born and born or living. You are unique. And to understand that uniqueness gives you the leverage to understand mm -hmm. you're the best person in the world. I remember a story about Pablo Picasso. And Pablo Picasso uh, did a Picasso. Mm -hmm. And he took that Picasso to, for an auction. And they asked, how much is this Picasso? Somebody said, ah, this is just $10. $10. Mm -hmm. Say, no, 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 this cannot be $10. And some, another person came, ah, this is just $100. Just a painting, mm -hmm. just look normal. How much do you think was that painting for the Picasso? Mm, unless I get to look at the painting, I'd also say $100. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely many people say that. Mm -hmm. But when you understand that Picasso costed $100 million. Dollars. $100 wow. million. Why would somebody cough $100 million? It's a masterpiece. Mm -hmm. So one of the greatest way to understand who you are is you are a masterpiece. There's something in this world that if you discover it, people would put their lives mm -hmm. down to ensure that you get that amount of money or to respect who you are. Mm -hmm. That's what you do. So understand that uniqueness of identity. Understand that you can succeed in something in this world that no one else can succeed. And if you get that thing right, you're able to do it. And that's what I call purpose. Mm -hmm. Once you understand what is my purpose and I do what is right, they say the world will make a well-beaten path to find where you live mm -hmm. and be able to suit you. So that's a reality. Mm -hmm. So understand your identity, who you are. Understand what's your purpose. Because mm -hmm. purpose is very critical. And then guess what? Once you understand about what's your purpose, manage the world. It's not what people say about you. It's what God says about you. Mm -hmm. And when you understand what God says about you, Everybody could be wrong. You could be the first person to pioneer that thing. Everyone thinks you're wrong. For instance, in Africa, no one thought somebody could buy water for drinking several years ago. Water was free in a homestead. Mm -hmm. But now, people, water is more expensive than milk. Water is more expensive than petrol. Mm -hmm. Water is life. Huh? Water is life. Mm -hmm. But somebody got to think you can get water from a well, mm -hmm. and that water can bring life, that water can be bought and people will buy water mm -hmm. and survive. Mm -hmm. So those are a couple of ideas that I think we can work on mm -hmm. in our pursuit of building a strong self-esteem. Uh, that is beautiful. Now on to our last, very last question and then you give us your, your parting shot. And it's very important, so I'll just read it because it's the very last, of course. So how can we practice self-compassion and self-care to build a stronger self sense of self-esteem? One of the ways of practicing that is being able to equip yourself to be competent, remember. Mm -hmm. And what is competence is about the information that we have. When you comprehend, get to know who you are, mm -hmm. get to know this is my strength. If, for instance, you're a journalist, have you done research you're able to do? When you research and understand your content well, mm -hmm. you are ready to face anyone and ask them any question and to know what the answer is because you're confident. But if you're not, you fear how would I ask this particular person. So one of the simplest ways a young person can do mm -hmm. is building behaviors, perhaps like reading books. Because when you read, you get to interact with so many people in different worlds, new information, that gives you an upper hand that somebody doesn't have. So that is one of the you can look at it. Secondly, is understanding when you know who you are mm -hmm. in terms of doing an assessment, continuous assessment. You're able to improve your strength, work on your strengths, and manage your weaknesses. Mm -hmm. Once you do that perfectly, then you have an opportunity to succeed wherever you are. That's the simplest way you can mm -hmm. put it. So what is one of the ways you can improve your confidence is when you know what you're able to say, which mm -hmm. knows your competence you're able to do. Work on it. Practice, practice, practice. Malcolm Gladwell says you need 10,000 hours for you to be an expert, a global expert mm -hmm. of expert. So when a global expert of expert, even if you miss a penalty, if I was to use an example like of Messi, mm -hmm. you're confident enough, you can still recover it and be able to do so. Other people will be like, I've lost the opportunity of a lifetime. Mm -hmm. So you need to practice, you need to understand what you're able to do, 
Sometimes you may make a mistake, but eventually you'll get there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow, that was beautiful. I'd like to thank you so much for having this conversation with us. You've given us so much information, which is very, very insightful. I, I really wish we could really spend so much time discussing this. But of course, time flies when you're doing important things in life. <laughs> thank you for joining us. Uh, until next time, we say in Africa, if you don't shake hands, you have not seen off your guests in a beautiful way. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. On to our Youth of the Week segment, we are taking a look at a Kenyan lady, Scholastika Wanjiru, the founder and CEO of Heroic Women Forum, a forum that offers support for women who are in grief from the losses of their loved ones. Let's have a look. Many women suffer from postpartum challenges after losing their newborn babies or young children. Scholastika Wanjiru Mudondu from Nairobi, Kenya, started an initiative that offers free counseling to women who are grieving their babies to help them overcome pain, grief, and other mental health issues that may result from losing a child and other caused by maternal challenges. One of our key factors is to help these women realize their healing and so that they become more productive economically and also they are able to go on and look after the other family members who have been left behind. Also to take care of their marriages because we realized um, that um, when a woman loses a child, sometimes they lose their minds, they become depressed, they start looking for uh, places to get solace to get um, to forget what they are going through, the pain they are going through. Some of them they resort to using the um, the, the substances. Maybe they become more alcoholic. They become they become more of drug abusers. Mm -hmm. And now we realize that marriages also they are breaking. So we realize that when you heal a woman, you heal a society. Through her heroic women forum, they host affected women once a month and on special occasions when their help is needed. She brings together the best counselors to attend these forums to talk to women and pay them for their services. Because but to me, my bado, I'm so at a hataki to engage the story. <laughs> so I had nitafute to at an idea. That's why I need nitafute program. So I mean, it's idea kukua na that we um to nime kuja kwake to na ongea na ananiskiza na at the end kuna ile help at a ku at an idea na. The organization, which started early January 2023, has impacted over a hundred women. Scholastica would like to reach a wider range of women, but she is limited by finances, which for now come from her pocket. Despite that, she says she looks forward to reaching women all over Kenya and also East Africa. Maya Angelo says, I've got my own back, and that is exactly what you should do in order to get a good self-esteem. Thank you for tuning in to Youth Impact once again. I have been your lovely host, Derek Wesley. And not to forget, our special gratitude goes to Convent International Hotel, your ideal conferencing partners. Stay curious and keep making a difference. Until next time, adios.